Good evening, everyone. My name is Angela Mills, and you are tuning in to a meeting of the Amherst Public Arts Commission. Um, at this time, I would like to recognize the chair, Terry Holt. And Terry, this is being recorded to the cloud and will be uploaded to the Town of Amherst YouTube channel and then linked automatically to the Public Art Commission webpage on the Town of Amherst website. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome, everybody. Welcome to September. We have a visitor. Hello there. I'm Terry Hello. Holt. Oh, that's Dominique. Hi, Dominique. Hello. Um, I'm going to introduce you in just a minute. First, I need to read a thing. Uh, I don't know if Lori's going to make it. So let's give her a minute or two. There she is. Yes. Lori. Hi, Lori. Hello. Good to see you. Wow. We are all here in the same place. Just wanna take a moment to recognize that and feel my gratitude for you all being here and taking the time to be here for this meeting. So this is the September, oh, what is the date? Good Lord, September 11th Amherst Public Art Commission meeting. I am gonna read my spiel here. Um, I am Terry Holt, I am the chair. In light of the ongoing COVID-19 coronavirus outbreak, the governor, then Governor Baker issued an emergency order on March 12th, 2020, allowing public bodies greater flexibility in utilizing technology in the conduct of meetings under the open meeting law. Pursuant to chapter 20 of the acts of 2021, this meeting will be conducted via remote means. Members of the, members of the public who wish to access the meeting may do so in the following manner by clicking on the Zoom link. Um, and as Angela said, this recording is uploaded to the town's YouTube channel and will be linked from our, or our uh, presence on the website. Um, I think that's it. So um, everybody's here. Um, can you all introduce yourselves? And uh, I'm going to introduce Dominique in just a minute. Let's start with Jim. What What am I supposed to say? Besides who, are, who, you, who are you and what do you do here? Oh, well, I'm. Uh, my name is Jim Barnhill. I'm a lawyer of 50 years experience and I uh, have a member of the Public Art Commission. Yay. I also am an art photographer, Exhibit A being my background. Great. Next. Tom, how about you go? Sure. Um, I'm Tom Warger. I'm the newest member of the committee. I joined back in August. Uh, delighted to be part of this group. Uh, I retired in uh, June of 2022 after a career in um, information technology consulting for higher education. So I'm glad to put all that behind me and work on real things like art. <laughs> We're glad to have you. Okay, Dara, you want to go next? Yeah, I'm Dara Barwa-Dixon, and uh, I think this is starting the third year I'm on the com commission, and um, I'm a poet and a writer, and that's how I make my living. Yay. Okay, Laura, you want to go next? Sure. I'm Lori Friedman, and um, I think I joined about the same time as you, Terry, and yep. Robert and Mikey. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm currently uh, do marketing and development for Jewish Family Service of Western Mass, but I have a long career in the art field and uh, running galleries, curating mostly in the art business side of things, and consulting with um, artists and currently doing some legacy and estate planning for artists. Awesome. Okay, Mikey. Um, I'm an artist. I'm an art historian. I'm a uh, historian at two historical societies, Amherst and Pelham. Um, I represent artists and I catalog artists' artwork. Well done. And Robert? Oh, and I run the Town Hall Gallery. Yes, you do. All right, Robert, you're up. Hi, I'm Robert Brannan. Um, as Lori said, um, I think it's been about a year now uh, that we joined uh -huh. uh, a little cohort of us. Um, uh, I've spent my career basically in the nonprofit sector in finance and administration and performing arts organizations, education, and currently in a community development corporation. And uh, I want you all to meet Dominique. She is here. Um, she is our Boltwood artist, so we're very happy to have her here. Um, Dominique, you want to say a few things about yourself? 
Hi, I'm Dominique Peachy. Um, I'm very excited to be here with all of you and very excited about what you're doing together for the arts. I am, um, and I'm so excited that you saw such potential in my work. And I really thank you for for honoring me with this opportunity. Oh, you Being honor us. Thank you so much. We really enjoyed your presentation and we're excited about the whole thing. Yeah. So um, on my agenda, I'm gonna jump right to Dominique's part so that we can honor her time. And so if you'll look at your agendas, I have, I'm gonna switch things around a little bit. Um, usually in my chair report, we talk about the Boltwood um, Gallery, but we're gonna jump to that now so that we can make the best use of our time. Um, I sent all of you a copy of the contract that we are gonna be finalizing tonight. I hope you got a chance to take a look at it. Did, did any of you get to look at it? I did. Great. Oh, the lawyer saw it. Oh, good. Uh, well, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So I have um, two parts of this pulled up on my computer and we can go through it or we can uh, address questions um, if you want to do that. Dominique has also had a copy and she and I have worked on her part of it, the artist statement. Uh, so uh, does anybody have anything they want to bring up first? Or we can just go through it piece by piece. Um, well, I, I would just like to say my comments are on some occasional um, imprecise wording. And okay. I was I was thinking if we can do it, it is a lot better for, for me just to go over that sort of stuff with just one other person. And I mean, I can give you an example. Um, Okay, artist is, artist is responsible for all accidents. That may seem perfectly fair to a non-lawyer. I don't know exactly what that means. Does that mean he has to indemnify and hold harmless the town from everything? Does it mean he's responsible for dealing with it, is responsible for paying with it? Does he have to pay the town's attorney's fees? Like, you know, when you've been a lawyer for a while, you, some of these things... Um, can be problematical in the worst case. Now, okay. most of the time, it doesn't matter. But when they do matter, it costs a whole lot of money to deal with it. Okay. So uh, this is the contract we have used in the past. So I have just kind of taken that contract and um, I've already brought it to Paul Bachleman, our town manager. Yep. And I he, uh, I believe, has gone over it with the town lawyer. Well, I drafted it. Yeah, well, great. Thank you. Um, so I don't know. Uh, Paul hasn't gotten back to me about um, what the lawyer said about it. So um, I'm working on the assumption that if there are changes that need to be done, then Paul will will effectuate. The, oh, that's a good word. Uh, well, Paul will make those changes along with the lawyer and uh, we can go from there because he's the guy who's going to be signing this. Paul is the only one in town who is allowed legally to sign contracts. So this lawyer so, has to vote for it. Yeah. So, Jim, if you would note your um, give, give me a list, if you don't mind, um, give me a list of all the things you're you're kind of looking at and you're concerned about. And I'm going to pass those along to Paul. OK. All right. So um, yeah. anybody else have anything in particular about the uh, the contract, uh, our, our part, the town's part? And we'll go over um, Dominique's together. So anybody have any things they want to talk about on the contract? Everything look okay besides what Jim brought up? Yeah, well, I, the thing I like about the contract is so well drafted. I think so, too. Like a real genius put that together. Dominique, do you have a question? Um, I haven't seen um, the Amherst side of the contract yet. So ah, I can send that over to you. Uh, actually, um, do you want to wait until Paul takes a look at it and makes his changes? Um or I can I can also send it to you. It's not a it's not a uh, I guess it's it's not you know uh, legal until it's signed. So I can send you a copy if that's if that's helpful to you. Sure. Yeah, and I understand there's going to be some adjustments. So yeah, that sounds good. Yeah. Okay. So um I will do that. And in the meantime, let's go over the um uh the artist part of her, the this is it's called Exhibit B in the contract. So I thought we would go over that together. I'm going to share my screen. We're gonna see if this works because you know this is fun. 
That's Doc By one. the way, I don't recommend that you put in an exhibit B to say C exhibit B. I think it'd be better if you can put it in. Exhibit I will. B. I will be doing that. Yeah. In the okay. final copy, I will be doing that exactly. Okay. Fine. Okay. Um, can you all see my screen? Uh, no. Mm -hmm. Oh, wait a minute. I can't read it. Oh, Let it's small. Hold I... on. Hold on. You I can want... make it bigger. I can make this better. Look at this. There we go. All right. Got it. Okay. So this Great. is um, what Dominique and I worked on. Um, she has here the design elements, five 10 by 10 mirrors with colored, uh, colorful mirrored images, um, five LED light pads, a four size, five extension cords, one it. timer to turn the lights on and off automatically. It's going to look awesome in the nighttime. And one power strip to connect all the light pads. So, and then, sorry, how question? Is, how old is Dominique? Dominique is here. You could ask her. Yeah, I'm asking. How, how old are you? If I may ask. <laughs> how much? I'm I'm 36 okay. <laughs> times around the sun. <laughs> oh wow. Okay. And yourself? <laughs> was that relevant for some reason, Jim? I'm just no, curious. Just we all to... tell our I ages. Was... <laughs> no, uh, <laughs> 29. It's not. <laughs> okay. Okay. Moving on. The description of the proposed artwork. Um, I'm going to read it here. I insulted um, you or anything. Viewers will see the reflection and color design elements merge onto one surface. This immediately makes the viewer a part of the artwork. Becoming part of the art installation is a key element that can be captured by photo, creating a playful conversation between this piece and the community that moves through Boltwood Plaza. In the evenings, this piece will be backlit by LEDs on a timer. This allows etched lines of color to be amplified and illuminated during darker periods. LEDs on timers will be adjusted to New England's fading daylight as the season moves forward. The designs etched into mirror surfaces are influenced by geometry, composition, vibrant colors, and a sense of play in Western Massachusetts. This work is an experimental convergence of printmaking, lighting, technology, and the viewer. Images are non-representational. However, viewers may imbue meaning when they come in contact with the work and their reflection. Seeing beyond the self with a sense of creativity, curiosity, and interaction is the guiding light of this current body of work. I love that. That's beautiful, Dominique. Um, and did you have a, a title for this piece that we that you decided on? So I can kind of have that for my notes. Was it? It was suggested uh, seeing beyond the self. And I thought that that was... That seems like a good choice. Okay. I love that. Um, minor, but installation is not spelled correctly. But the main thing I want to ask, what kind of images are these going to be? Ah, I mean, it just um, says images. It doesn't say what kind or what the subject matter is or anything else. Correct. Um, so let me see. I think I have an example with me right now. Um, ooh. So Terry was kind enough to let me uh, take one of these home with me to get it started. Um, <laughs> this is a really weird way of showing it. <laughs> um, really but it. There's trails and ponds, and I'm sorry that the computer said. So yeah, that's, be... that's tricky. <laughs> are they abstracts? Are they going to be but abstracts? They they are abstracts. Um, they're like kind of little journeys. Nothing too alarm. Like nothing alarming. They're like there's rainbows and trails and trees and leaves. Um, so, so my point being, I think the contract should be a little more specific about what, what they're going to be. Well, I think we have the words abstract in here. Um, says, well, what I'm reading about colorful mirrored images, which is very vague. What would you think we should be saying here instead? And Dominic, you can totally pipe in here if there's something else you want to say. Well, it sounds like they're non it sounds like they're I mean I couldn't really see what you were sharing Dominique but it sounds it, it says that they're non-representational um but it also but it sounds like but include references to nature is that what I'm hearing yes so non -abs semi abstract non-representational na nature scenes would it or, be helpful for me to send you images of what I have to be included in the document so you know exactly what you're getting. Oh, you could add exhibit B123 or whatever. How many are they going to be? You could add that. There's right. a lawyer thing. <laughs> <laughs> abstract landscape. 
uh, suggestion, Jim. We might just uh, add them as thumbnail size um, yeah. the, uh, illustrations and, and spare Dominique the uh, artist's pain of having to interpret her own work. Well, that's what <laughs> I, I, I thought I was. That's what I meant when I said that's exhibit wonderful. B, one, two, three, four. Okay. That works for me. I'm happy to provide uh, thumbnail images of all five pieces. Uh, Thank you. That would be wonderful. Great. We will add Is that in with, the, with this contract. That'd be great. Is there a day that I should have those in to you at the latest? So, um, before the contract sign. Yeah. Do you have, so I know we have a date of the, what, the 15th or the 14th for completion of the project. Um, mm -hmm. If, are you close to that date or are you on that date or how close will you be there? I'm two thirds. I'm two just thirds. coloring in. So I have the actual images themselves. So I can okay. send those. All that I'm doing is adding color at this point. If you could send me those, I will add them to the contract, which I'll be bringing over. I'll be sending over to Angela tomorrow so that we can get it signed. Is that if is that okay? That, if, if you do that and they're not colored, you need to know that they will be colored by contract yeah. completion. Yeah, if you just make a note, that'd be great. Okay. Okay. Um, moving on, Dominique. Am I saying your name correctly? Pe Peachy? Peachy? It's Peachy. Dominique Peachy. Peachy. Okay. Dominique uh, Peachy retains all rights to original uh -huh. artwork. And will be cited by name on any and all Amherst Public Art Commission marketing and media engagements using images or referencing this work. Um, and I have the dates of importance in here, and these are the dates that we worked out together. Deadline of completion is September 15th. Installation, uh, it would be a dream if we could get this up before September 21st, which is the block party. I would love to do that so that we can use the block party to, as a launch. Um, we'll have a built-in um, built-in crowd to attract and, and send over. I, I think that'd be delightful. Um, so I have the unveiling here is hopefully on September 21st. And then the end of the exhibit is a year from now, but minus a month. So July 31st will be the end of the exhibit. And then removal should be done within 30 days. Well, this word hopefully sends my skin crawling. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's me. That's the... Well, I mean... What happens if it's not is why I said that. All right. Um, so I suppose I put that language in there because we hadn't determined yet. So that was kind of something that happy to change. Yeah, we were we were hoping that we to hit that, but we can get rid of the word hopefully. Okay. Oh, my pen just died. Why I have 20 pens here and none of them work. It's amazing. Okay. Um, payment of 1500 will be paid by check to the artist, singular, before installation of work. Okay. Um, I've talked to it's Dominique about it. needing a W-9, I believe, for the town. And so Dominique's going to provide that, I think. So, Robert, you had a question? Uh, yes. Um, I, I think, um, Dominique, you may have to provide some sort of invoice as well for the town um <clears throat> for them to pay off of i can help so, you with that it's a so even if it's just you know uh artist materials etc i i don't i don't think they're expecting a, a line by line itemized invoice but they need some kind of documentation um in order to pay i i think probably that and the contract would be sufficient plus your w9 but they will need some kind of, I think, document from you. I was curious because it was unclear to me if because it was a prize or if it were uh, like a payment, how I should. Actually, that's an interesting point. You know, let me, um, I can send an email to the the town uh, controller just to clarify what they'll need in this case. Okay, great. Yeah, Robert, if, if you'll double back in, uh, get back with Dominique and let her know what she needs, that would be great. Um, can I skip ahead now, or um, can you skip? I'm, I'm, I'm no, don't skip. Hold on. Um, okay, uh, I think we're on access part, right? Access to Boltwood Plaza space. No, during I, the okay, you just went past payment. We really want to pay for it in full before the work's done. We just talked about that. Um. Yep. Sorry, I was doing minutes. I'm having a trouble keeping up with the conversation, participating in it, and doing the minutes. That's okay. Um, I have run into problems before, well, problem with trying to pay an artist before 
the installation. Um, Dominique, what are your, are you okay to have your payment after installation? Will that be okay? Um, it would be kind of normal, but first off, I, I was unclear if this is a prize or not, or That's, payment. Yeah, we gotta um, figure out that language. I'm sorry, what's, what's the issue? Um, well, we need to find out if this is a prize or if this is a payment. And I think that's, there's a difference there in what kind of documentation the comptroller needs. Oh, well, Robert and probably does. So Robert's going to, going to ask that question. It, yeah, yeah, it could be that the contract is sufficient. I just don't know. And, you know oh, yeah. I heard you talk about that. I'd rather yeah. try to find out mm -hmm. early so that it doesn't slow up the process. Well, my problem with it is, is that it's really not customary nor is it wise to pay for something before you get it um i do believe in my line of work a deposit is generally considered good business between the artist and the person commissioning the work mm -hmm. well and it sounded to me like some what's the total being paid here it's 1500 altogether so so that makes it not a deposit i agree with you progress payments partial payments i agree it's the way we usually compromise things out but this is paying the entire contract price before the work is delivered which makes me um well as the person who went out and bought the materials and supplies for it um without a, any sort of deposit i i can tell you you will be getting this work <laughs> how about 750 uh before installation and 750 on installation. Um, so would you be open to say 500 before and then 11 after? That's better than what I, that's worse for you than what I just said to you. <laughs> well, one, it, the first payment I wouldn't be taxed on. And the second one, I would. Oh, okay. Well, fine. What do you want to? What What was it before? So, as opposed to a tire fifteen lump, it would be four hundred dollar deposit. So you wouldn't have to have a form for that, essentially, for like tax purpose. And then eleven on like a W nine or a W nine miss because it's a prize. I'm not entirely sure. This is all kind of new territory for me. So, like, I'm open to a lot of input. Yeah, okay. yeah so I think unfortunately, though, the town is going to aggregate that. In other words, uh, no matter how you uh, slice it up, it's still going to be fifteen hundred in total, and that would be um, for ten ninety nine yeah. purposes, which I think is what you're referring to as being under the six hundred dollar threshold they're they're going to lump everything together. So whether you get paid 500 up front and then 1,000 or 400, 1,100, it, it's not going to, it's not going to matter to the town from, mm -hmm. from that perspective. So. I just, I, don't, I, I just don't want you to have different expectations from, from their reality. So if I am turning in this work for, at the very latest, September twentieth. I'm just curious when, I, like, when the first payment would be and when the second payment would be, if it were to be split, um, in the seven fifty two payment style. If he wants to do the deposit. Oh, that's a really good thing to bring up because our system usually takes two weeks for checks, so it's almost a moot point. Looking at the time, um, it being September eleventh. That's a really good question. I guess the other question is, is the, is the timeline realistic for installation given where we are now and how soon? Oh, I'm, yeah, I'm very close to installation. It's not, I have the product. Um, okay. I'm, it's essentially going to be me placing good faith in you guys that your, your check's going to clear, which I believe it is. <laughs> Better. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, <laughs> yeah, I think the town's <laughs> Robert's request for clarification from the town should help help us, and maybe they can give us some advice on. I'm sure this isn't the first instance this kind of question has come up. 
Lucy, yeah, I will definitely I would definitely stress that we would like to process the payment as promptly as possible. So, you know, you're not kept waiting longer than than is necessary. Um, but. Having worked in a lot of business offices, I can tell you there's there is sometimes uh, not as much flexibility as one would hope. But um, yeah. let, well, let me follow up and, and see what I can find out for you. I mean, mm -hmm. given that time frame right now. Yeah. It sounds to me like, you know, next step, Robert, you will find out, you know, clarify whether it's a, a grant, a gift, a prize, you know, what what it is, an honorarium for doing whatever they name it as, and that the um, it should be put in as soon as possible if it takes two weeks to get payment. And so that is probably going to come after the installation. Yep. So I think it, it is, as you said, I think a moot point and... Yeah. Uh, however you want to, I'm okay with however you want to word that. <laughs> well, it's sentence. not, a, but, but you know, it's not okay if you say you're going to pay before installation, you don't. Well, you can say it, that that will be paid by check to the artist. Um, you could say upon installation of the work. Yeah, but that would be good. It, that sounds like we're not going to meet the date anyway. Right. Well, maybe it may, can we... Um... I know the goal is to finalize this tonight, but perhaps that has to be left open until we get a response from the town in terms of when they will pay. Because if if they're fairly clear that they're not going to pay for, say, another two weeks, or if they have a particular proof of completion that they're looking for, um, we'd have to incorporate that into the language of the, the contract. Okay. So well, maybe it needs to say upon a uh, check will be paid um, to the artist upon installation of the work or at the first date. You know, some some language about that um, the town um, we can put about in. This. To Why don't we with say the, the check will be paid uh, upon completion of the work and within blank days thereafter, and then have them fill in the time after we talk to them, and then we won't have to meet to discuss this again. Perfect. How's that? Sounds great, Jim. All okay. right. So you got the exact language. You want to send that to me or do you want me to just sure, it'll give me a chance to type it? <laughs> right. Let's give Jim a second to type that. Yeah, sorry. Thank you for your patience with this, Dominique. Um, many of us are also very new to this process. And uh you and four of us are brand new to the commission. So this is our first artist we're paying. So we're excited about it. <laughs> we want to get it right. <laughs> Believe it or not, I find this incredibly interesting because it's all new territory for me. So I appreciate the dialogue. Right. Well, the other the other important point that you're raising, and and you know, I'm happy to include this question in my email, is if we're going to be engaging artists like this going forward for hopefully lots of different projects, um, it is best practice to pay a deposit before. Yep. The work is completed yeah. because as Dominique points out, she's she's already right. spent considerable uh, funds on this. So I think um, yeah, that principle. Hope, hopefully, the town won't be so rigid that they insist on absolute completion before they're willing to to make payments. So well, I think that, it's that's a conversation we have to have. With I, them. Robert, I think what you're doing is perfectly reasonable, and I've seen a lot of contracts that say just that. I mean, yeah. It's just the problem is I had was only paying for everything before completion. I think it's more fair to do what you just said. And I, I've seen many, many very large contracts that I used to negotiate with just like that. And right. Tom, but we just have to make sure that the town is is willing right. to do that. That's, no, that's agree. variable. Yep. Tom, did you have something you wanted to say? No, I just, I just I wanted to say that that principle is worth uh, asking the town to to address for us because right. it's on to repeat. And I have to think with all the different activities that the town's engaged in, this can't be the first time uh -huh. uh, of substantial outlay before completion of work has come up. But uh, uh, we're all learning here. Keep a step on Robert's uh, statement that we have to be cautious about what, how, how much flexibility we can suggest here from the comfort of our little Zoom session. Okay. Not, to, not to prolong it any, but if you start thinking about how this is going to work, somebody in the town is responsible for processing the check. 
that person is going to have a flood of other checks that they're also processing. For somebody to walk in and say you have to do this one first is probably not going to go over well. No, so we're, we, we're aware there's a two week process for any check that you ask for. Well, that is that I'm just is saying, you got to be you got to be a little. I'm just saying we have to be fair to everybody, including the people that write the checks, and then everybody's happy and they'll get it done. This is kind of a. Um... I have to say this case is definitely unique in that we are all new to this and are we're far behind on this deadline and on this entire project. So we are kind of catching up and learning along the way. So um, I, I, I'm just going to chalk this up to a learning experience. And <laughs> the next time we do this, we will be professionals at it. <laughs> so thank you again, Dominique, for, for you know lumbering along with us on this. So we're going to make some changes here. Robert's going to reach out to Wait. the town and we're going to whip this into shape and use some different language. And um, Wait a uh, minute. I have another problem, which is more important. OK, down to the bottom of. Uh, well, first of all, you've got a artist will have access to the adjustments during this period. This period could be clarified is not that big a deal, but it, it's a little vague. But the one that really makes my skin crawl as it says commission agrees to ensure that the work is maintained and protected to the extent practical which are contradicting each other so exactly it's not clear from that i don't think what the agreement is what is the commission practically going to actually do because that one could that that could unleash a work kind of argument meant keeping that door locked so no which it sounds like you guys already do because you have equipment in there so nobody can like mess with it <laughs> yeah the, the town has uh snow blowers in there and etc so they keep it locked up whatever is in there we got to make darn sure that we actually do it and so you you know if you're going to say i'll keep it locked at all times and it's not locked at all times and there's a problem and the it's stolen that's on us and you know is the the next problem is that since it's a contract claim, it's maybe not covered by our insurance. And so then you get a lot of political flack. So this is a very important word, insure. Okay. And it's important to know exactly what we're going to do and what we're not going to do. And it's, impo and it's important that what we say we're going to do, we actually can do and that we do do. So what is, is there a different verbiage you would use there instead of insure? Uh, uh, well, I at this point, I don't think it's really clear exactly what the deal is on on this particular point. I mean, can we can we? If, if you might be able to rephrase it for me in a maybe in a different way of just should the artwork be damaged uh, from the outside or the inside? Like heaven forbid, somebody throws like a rock through the yeah. window or something. Right. That, um, I'll be able to have the opportunity to repair it, but not at a cost to me. What I'd like it to say is the commissioning agrees to use reasonable efforts to protect the art work to the extent possible. Yes. I love it. Yeah. Okay. What do you think, Tom? Yeah, uh, Dominique, a, a little technical question, if mm. you pardon that from this quarter, but um, if, if there's a power outage, Will your stuff recover? In other words, when the power comes back on? Well, it'll be on a power switch uh, or like a little power strip. Yeah. Um, so somebody might have to go in there and just hit the switch. Like reset mm -hmm. it. Yeah. Okay. So I'm not sure if you if you guys collectively keep an eye out on the portal gallery area, but uh, it should be able to to be fixed easily. Okay. Okay, and they can't really say the commission that needs to say the town. Okay. So yeah. the changes that you're suggesting, Jim, if you'll just make sure that those are in writing, because my little brain, I want to get it right, you know. Don't worry, it's tricky, and then you get the wrong wording, and then it doesn't work, so I'll send it to you. I've got it already. Awesome. Okay, that sounds good. Uh, let's see. Thank you for bringing those up, Jim. You're welcome. Um. That was, I'll just rewrite maintenance and repairs and I'll send it to you tomorrow morning. How's that? That sounds good. Is that fast enough? Tomorrow morning is fine. Yes. Okay. I'm not going to work beyond tonight. So that works out fine. Then we'll have, uh, 
all the questions that we have will be answered. Robert will get his answers. Jim will add his things. We'll uh, send everything in a document to Angela and Angela will go over it with Paul, of course, the town manager and probably the attorney. And then um, Dominique, I'll let you know when it's ready and then we can meet up and have a coffee on me <laughs> and you can take a look and we can see if that works. Okay, does that work out for you? That sounds good. Um, and then if we could keep in touch about possibly getting uh, the other frames so I can outfit them. Yes, yes, I have the key so I can I can do that. You and I can uh, talk offline about timing and scheduling. That works for me. Awesome. Well, I'm going to go take pictures of these images. Thank you all so much for your time. Thank I you really for your time. We really appreciate your being here. Dominique, I'm excited to see your final product. I think it's going to be great. You are very excited. One, one question. Oh, one, one, yes, one thank question. You. I just wanted to ask one more question. In terms of the um, the signage, is that in there that I, did I miss that? I'm working on the signage. That's something I'll work on with the town. Okay, great. Thank yeah. you. Sure. Thank okay. you, Dominique. Thank you so much, Dominique. Have a good night. Thank you all. See you as well. Later. <laughs> Okay, so back to our agenda. Thank you, everybody, for going through that. Thank you, Jim, for your expertise. Welcome. I am not the one who knows all that. Okay, uh, I'm going to stop sharing my screen. So I can you can see my lovely face. There you go. Okay, um, back to my agenda. Okay. Okay. Um, moving on. Uh, approval of July and August minutes. Did everybody get a chance to take a look at those? I did. Oh, I was going to ask, um, Jim, is there a way to put the chair report into the minutes instead of it being a separate document? I think for it would be a little bit easier. for. Did you for send people. it to me in a Word file? or a I PDF? send it to you uh, in an email and you copy and paste it. That makes it very difficult because the formatting gets all screwed up. If you could attach a PDF to it or send a Word file and attach it to an email, I could probably do it a lot easier. Okay. I will send it in a PDF then next time. I did not this time. Jim, Jim, you might want to run the spell checker to catch acclamation. <gasps> what, where? Um, on my. Uh, it's at the oh, bottom. In the minutes. Yeah, I did run one, but it doesn't spell any better than I do sometimes. Okay, <laughs> okay which minutes is this? Well, I'm I'm looking through them here. Um, is that July or August? Yeah, that's what I'm trying to. Oh. Uh, Spot. All right, uh, let's start with July. Since uh, we did not have quorum at the last meeting, we're going to approve July and then we'll approve August. Then we'll move on. Okay. Um, I any... move that we approve July with any, uh, with, if necessary, re, uh, correcting the spelling of the word acclamation. All right. <laughs> It's a move on. Everybody want to vote for this here? Anybody want to second that? Second. Okay. All in favor of approving the July minutes? Aye. Say aye. Aye. Yes. aye. Thank you very much. Motion passes. And now taking a look at the August. I have a brief correction to the August uh, okay. minutes. Um, actually, it's part of the share report um i think the date for the block party is actually september 21st rather You're than correct i caught that too yeah september 21st in the yes. uh, chair report yes i made it i think i put the 23rd by mistake yep it's on a thursday it's always on a thursday apparently yeah it's always on a thursday oh. Oh. Okay, so I move that we approve the Ju the August minutes with the correction of the word acclamation if spelling necessary it's necessary and correct the block party date to September 21st. Okay, there's a motion on the floor and I get a second. Second. Yep. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Lots of ayes. Everybody's ayes. Great. All right, motion passes. Minutes are passed. Yay. Thank you very much, everyone. Okay. Um Let's talk about the new exhibit at Town Hall, Mikey. Um, I know we need to get some volunteers in here to help with that. So. Um, actually, I, I got my husband a minute. and um, Carla Becker well, because uh, they both know Bella very well. 
Oh, so, sorry, Jim, need a minute? Yeah, well, yeah, because I don't see that in the agenda. So can you just uh, tell me? It, after approval of July and August minutes, there's new exhibit at Town Hall. It's right, okay. right, right after it. Okay, I missed it then, new exhibit at Town Hall. Uh, and I had after it call for volunteers thinking that Mikey might need some help with that. Okay. I, I, I got, I got family. <laughs> wow. I was totally going to get my kids to come help. You got it then? Um, I think so. If anybody wants to come on Thursday afternoon, it's Carla Thursday? and Robert, my husband, Robert Cutting will be there and they're going to drive her over. Bella Halstead is 86. Oh, she wow. did a show there um, in 2017, and she also did one, I think, in 2009. Wow. She did a horse show exhibit um, there, and she did another one at the Jewish community. She used to uh, have a gallery on Main Street on the third floor, and there's an art maker um, article about her. Um, from when she was younger, she was 76 at the time and she had another show and she also had one in the Burnett Gallery and at um, Hope and Feathers. Oh, exciting. So, yes. And she is the granddaughter of um, Charles Hopkinson, who was the famous um, presidential portrait painter. Oh, okay. Yes. So she's the granddaughter. That's amazing. And, yeah. Her last, her last uh, exhibit was... 2017 okay in the town hall if you can send me um uh information on her so i can write up a bio so i can have it for well, the website. she's going to give me a new one tomorrow perfect great yeah and we so have I'll some have that. images i can put up there too right right great okay and these so are I'll very be... large paintings okay. and they're either oil or watercolor they'll be much smaller on the website <laughs> all right. right well i'll be up i'll be sending uh um Bryn, Brianna, Brianna, um, who was our communications director with the town, I'll be sending her some corrections to the website and also adding our new featured artists there with pictures. So that'll be great. Okay. Well, so that's okay, so after Jim's is, which is November and December, I would love some help doing the town hall um, exhibits because it's hard to get people to... Yeah to put their artwork in it's uh because they all want uh the um arts night everybody right. I talk to wants the arts night and we don't have that in play anymore is the 21st are they gonna have the building open for... uh, I do not know if they'll have the building open right uh, so yeah there's something we should really think about Mikey I don't want to take that on but I volunteer Mikey just just let me know when and you know, this that's an open open ended uh, offer. Great, thank you. Okay, thank you. so what you so we don't know when you need volunteers. Is that the um? Story? I don't need volunteers for this one unless anybody wants to come and help. Um, my husband and Carla Becker are going to bring her over. I work until four every day, and the right. um, building closes at four thirty. So, so when is the exhibit going to be put up? It's going to be put up on Thursday. Okay. Uh, Mikey, anytime you need extra um, time, we can always negotiate that with Town Hall. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Let, no, me know let me know if you need any help hanging it. You know, okay. Um, I mean, like when. Yeah, I've also got some free time on Thursday. So, right. Um, but I think well, if what you want Mikey to pop would... over anytime after one and see or, and take pictures or on how they're doing it and. Oh, yeah. Carla Becker is the daughter of Fred Becker, who was a printmaker at um, UMass. Mm -hmm. um, and his, her mother was uh, Jean Morrison Becker, one of the people that started the Burnett Gallery. Okay. So, yeah. I think um, key to what Mikey's asking here for is some help for future uh, artists. So I think it would uh, behoove us all to kind of write down some artists that we know of who we think might want to have a an exhibit in town hall, just kind of help. And we can start reaching out to people um, soon. So we can right. get, 20, oh God, 2024 lined up. Whew. It's right. cannot so 20. the other thing is, is I think we should also um, try to figure out and talk to the artists to find out if they sold anything okay. or if they have a lot of feedback or what kind of feedback they have. So we have that information too going forward for other artists. 
Okay. So you mean like the existing artists, when they finish, ask them if they've sold anything so that we can tell the new ones? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Right? And, okay. and to find out how they're perceived um, by different people that went into the town hall. That's good. That's I just good. think it's good feedback. Right. Okay. Wait a minute. What what is perceived? The artist? The artist and their work. How will the artist know how it's perceived by people who well be, if people contacted them if yeah. if they got okay. inquiries right. and that sort of if thing. If they got yeah. feedback, okay. Yeah. That would help tremendously, I would think. Yes. Recruiting future artists. Yes. If right. That uh well, you know, that there were some sales from it. Right. right. And I yeah. think we need to up our game a little bit with the social media marketing and promoting of the artists um, on yeah. Facebook and uh, the town mm -hmm. website too. So mm -hmm. that's something that's kind of on me. I need to work on that. Okay. Thank you so much, Mikey. So sure. Exciting. Very exciting. Um, moving on to chair report. You ready, Jim? Yeah. Thanks. <laughs> All right. You guys uh, talk fast. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Okay, um, my chair report, uh, I'm gonna go over the three projects in play right now. Uh, poetic Dialogue, uh, I've again tried to contact uh, Kamel. Um, I'm not getting replies. Um, the check is ready to be cut, but Kamel uh, said he would do the install and then submit an invoice. And he hasn't done that or replied to my texts or emails. So I'm, I'm kind of at a, I'm stuck. So I'm not really sure what to do. Um, I can try to reach out to him again. I've sent him a text and an email. Usually he gets back to me, but he has not yet. So you're so, saying the work is not completed? Work is not completed. No, he started the work. He um, re-drilled uh, re the bolt holes um, a few weeks few weeks ago, and I thought that that meant it was going to be finished. But I know we've had a lot of rain. Uh, it might be, you know, that might be a problem. He probably also has other projects he's working on. So I am waiting for him to get back to me. And so I don't have anything else besides that. My hope was to get that done by the 21st, because for block party, I would love to have that be something that we can point to and say, look, this is up again. Um, so I have let him know that I would like it done by the 21st. But uh, again, we're at his mercy. So I hope he can get it done. Uh, if not, I'm really not sure where to go from there. If I may interject, that's a real education for what you put in contracts with the artist for the future. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Is he, did he have a deadline? Uh, Kamel is not the, the artist who made this. Um, he's somebody who is, is able to do the metal work to get it back up than he was willing to. Sorry, go ahead, Dara. Did he have a deadline? Um, I did not do any kind of contract. It was verbal. He said he could do it. We told him we could pay him $500. I thought it was going to be pretty easy. So, um, there's yeah. never easy. <laughs> so, uh, I'm, I'm a little stuck. I'm not sure what to do from here. Um, I'm going to give it another week or two, and then I think I'm just going to drop it. I'm not sure what else to do. If you drop it, talk to me, please. Okay. Because the problem oh. is, you drop it. He says we had an agreement. You didn't, you know, blah 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 blah. You get a big mess. But it, you're right. not going to be very big mess for five hundred bucks. I don't think. Okay. So that's that. That's, that's the update on that. I, I don't have anything else to to say about making it public right now, or, or about poetic dialogue. Making it public, I do have something to say. Um, the town manager and I met with the program director at the New England Foundation for the Arts, Kim Setso. Uh, on Friday, we had a meeting, and um, at that meeting, uh, Kim let us know that uh, NEFA will be canceling the final payment of the agreement. They've already paid the first payment, the $5,000. Uh, they're canceling the second payment on the agreement. Um, the training and the public art project were two separate components of making it public, and no one in our commission uh, or in the town had the benefit of that training who's actually employed right now. Uh, so getting the public art project back on a timeline doesn't honor the original purpose of the making a public project. So we have missed the deadlines. Therefore, our contract and agreement are null. Um, she was very nice about it. And uh, Paul uh, and I conceded and apologized that, you know, we've had some some uh, losses to the town. We don't have an, a planner to take this up again. Our, our volunteer helper 
for this. Um, Gabrielle had to bow out. So we're, we've been, you know, we haven't had the direction and liaison with the town. So it's made it really difficult to, to do this project. And she was very understanding. Um, Paula was contrite, you know, <laughs> we said all the right things. Um, and she invited us to come back in, I know in a few years and try again when, once we get our program back up and running and get our town <laughs> employees back in place. Uh, it was a good agreement. Uh, she said she is not going to ask for the uh, first payment of $5,000 back. And she would love for us to choose to um, instead uh, pay, maybe reimburse the artists for their proposals, uh, kind of honoring their time and work. And I, I want to talk about that. Um, I would like to do that very much. Robert, go ahead. So where did that five thousand dollars go exactly? Because I so, I, don't, I don't think it's in our. Account. It isn't. So yeah. it went to the town of Amherst. Um, Paul see. said that's where it is, and so I uh, sent him an email today asking him to please put it into our account so that so, we can have control over our funds. So who paid that five thousand bucks? Nefa. Nefa gave us the, so of the ten thousand dollar grant that we that we got. They they paid the first installment of five thousand oh. dollars New England Foundation for the Arts. Thank you. <laughs> um, and remind me, Terry, how many people, how many artists um, submit? We had three proposals. Okay. So um, it's um, I would like to have a little vote on it. Um, I would like to use three thousand dollars of those funds to reimburse the three artists whose proposals we received. Um, and in gratitude for their time and apology also for um, for how this went down. I think that would be the right thing to do. Uh, putting money into the artist's hands is something we want to be doing anyways. So um, I think it's a good use of the funds. Okay, so wait a minute. So we've got three artists you're going to want to pay for something. And are there any other artists who might feel like they should have been paid too? Well, three people put in proposals. We have so three that was all of the people. That's all we had. Oh, okay. And uh, you're paying what? How much for exactly? A thousand dollars each. Or it's something what? that Paul and uh Paul and Kim and I all kind of agree would be a cool thing to do. Yeah, but for what are you paying them a thousand? What do they do to earn a thousand dollars so we know? That's a great question. Uh for turning for submitting a proposal. Robert, you had a question. Sorry. I do. Uh I was going to suggest five hundred dollars each, with the right. idea that it is under the six hundred dollar threshold, hmm. which means they would not receive a ten ninety nine from the town for that. Okay, okay, that's a good point. Yeah, yeah I, I think, think the thing five a thousand bucks for a proposal is going to create. Uh, yeah, I think that's that's right. yeah. Um, I think in, a, if we go um, back in, to the context of our discussion. With Dominique, you know, a thousand dollars for just preparing a proposal is uh, a little high, I think. Okay. Okay. Not to not to mention, you know, it sets. A, what if we had accepted two other proposals and rejected one? Let's say that the facts are different. We got the money, but we rejected one proposal. We didn't like it. We took the other two, and then the third proposal said yes. But in that project, you the other that you couldn't complete, you paid for all of the proposals and I want my 500 bucks. Yeah, I think this is a unique scenario here. Dara? I, I feel like how you word this is really important because- Very, very, very much so. I don't wanna have a precedent of paying people for proposals. Nope. Mm -hmm. yeah. Failed proposals shouldn't get any money unless mm. prior to anybody making a proposal, they were told, that these this is what proposals would do, and thousand dollars is way too much. Okay. I don't yeah. think I, I've got concerns about paying for any of it, even though I would love to, from one point of view. But the other point of view is, I I think what the future might get you know messed up. Hey, anybody? Else? I, we need Let's, to worry a bit about the, the precedent it sets both uh, formally and also by, you know, grapevine, what people might hear. Yeah, right. It's very interesting that they decided to leave the $5,000 with us. Yeah, it is. And they, I mean, and they was... really specifically said they would love for us to put some money into the artist's hands. And mm -hmm. uh, 
that's why I even, you know, that's okay. why the artist hands who, who, yeah. Can we think of something, some where they actually do something for the money and we get it into their hands for actually some kind of deliverable? Because I would love to do that. Well, um, they have not put the time into creating these projects because these were just proposals. These were like bids. Give them so the that would be put in sale contracts on a project that we have already been canceled. Uh, I'm saying give do some other display where they actually have to do something, and but they already pre-approved, so they know they're going to win. So yeah, you I can know. Say, if you do if you do this project, we will pay you five hundred bucks or a thousand bucks or whatever you want to pay them. But they have to deliver something for it, so it's not a precedent. I think, or maybe put something in the town hall of their three uh, presentations. I don't think that's something. that's not ready, right? So, but not right now. But we have two other artists for fall and winter, so I'm just wondering, maybe down the road, somewhere, maybe. Okay. I think that's a smarter way way to go. That. Uh, you know, I, I can understand that that the town feel, feels bad about how this, you know, kind of fell apart. Um, but to, to, to me, the best news in this is that it sounds like the fences were mended with NFA. Mm -hmm. So um, so that we're in good standing for the future. Yeah, we're uh, not invited to apply for the 2024. But beyond <laughs> that, we are invited to apply again. I think that's I think that's good, and if we can do, I like Mikey's suggestion about you know something not monetary but still helpful to them that we could do. If I'm if I'm phrasing that right, Mikey. Okay, Lori, what are you thinking here? Well, it's all very vague that they they gave the five thousand without it being without anything attached to it with this sort of vague, you know, we want to support artists and then it goes to the three artists. It feels a little arbitrary that it goes to the three artists where it's canceled. So, I mean, I, I don't know if it, you know, attaching, if we attach, if we said, you know, we would, if we could, if it makes sense to create something out of it, but I, I can't quite think through if there's an issue with saying, you know, we're really disappointed that we've had to cancel this and we invite, you know, we've had three submissions and we we're inviting all three artists to participate in an exhibition at our town hall next spring. And we would give you an honorarium of each one of you $500 and to present us with, you know, to give us something that we would exhibit. Okay. That's a possibility. Proposals that. next spring. I actually really like that idea. And we could set aside a, you know, a time. We could say in, you know, spring of 2024, we will use, you know, we will be paying an honorarium of 500 each for a exhibit on, on you three artists. What do we think about that? Is that? Yep. Yeah, that works for me. I, I'm going to have to write an apology, um, apology letter to these three folks and I'll need some help with verbiage because I'm really good at writing, but I, I don't want this to come just from me. Um, but in mm -hmm. that letter, I would, that's where I would propose this. And if they have an interest, we would go forward. And um, if not, then we would drop it. So um, yeah, I would, I would like to see that just to put a legal eye on it. Yeah. Oh yeah. And I think that the, the, the money, if it is, if it, <laughs> the town will put it into our account, I mean, that's really fantastic that we ended up with this, you know, amount of money to work with. And that money will be used for public art in Amherst. So it will find its way into the hands of, of artists through however we choose to use it and also maybe using it to promote something that we're doing in the future. I love that. Yeah. Go ahead, Dara. So, uh, curiosity, what was the uh, NEFA representatives reasoning for letting the town keep $5,000? I, I think because um, this was a grant that was, you know, like a two-part grant. It was a, I think taking it back would be problematic financially also as part of like the agreement. And I think contractually and legally, 
it's probably a lot cleaner and less messy to just let us keep the money, honestly. Um, that's all. I mean, I don't, that's all I, that's what I think. I, I think she had the power to say, we're not going to ask for this money back. And so we said, thank you very much. <laughs> it's, a, it's a pretty amazing <laughs> and positive outcome for us, given much. the whole trajectory of this. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's been, a, it's been a rough, uh, I know, Laura, you're, I know you're probably breathing a big sigh of relief here. <laughs> I, I, honestly, I, I am a little. I am it's too. The rose, a it's the rose de decorated finale to a, something that could have dumped us into the mud. So I think congratulations for your handling of it. Mm -hmm. Yes. All right. So I think, though, that we should spend something noticeable of the $5,000 soon. Right. Okay. I think that would be good politics with NEFA. Okay. So um, well, we do, we have a block party coming up, but that's, you know, more than yeah. that's. And then so I think they, I think that we can let them know that we once we hear back from the artists if they're that we're putting this exhibition together um and then we could even expound upon the exhibition in terms of you know public art in Amherst or you know we can do more with it than just the three when the time comes yeah I love it yep. yeah okay. something like that would be good okay I think this is a I think we're all in agreement that this is a really good way to go forward and try to um, make uh, lemonade out of these lemons? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I actually think that if we could use this exhibition as a way of educating Amherst residents on public art, mm -hmm. that would be fantastic. Okay. In, in support of our work and in support of what public art brings to the town. So it could be, you know, it, it'll take some work, but if we're thinking about it for the spring, we have some time. Okay, so let's um, put this on the table for October for talking more about this. And uh, I could use some help offline creating uh, an apology letter and kind of setting this up and welcoming, welcoming them for a project. I'll have you on board, Jim. Um, I'll help too, Tara. Great. Uh, I, can't, I can't do it with a quorum, but I can do it with fewer than a quorum. Uh, we can talk about that. And then in October, uh, we will meet again and I'll put this on the agenda. Um, so let's just make sure that you don't do anything to make the people working on it look like a subcommittee, because if they look like a subcommittee, then you have to have a public meeting for the subcommittee. Right. We're not going to we're not going to do that. You know, see, if I do it as a lawyer, that's not a subcommittee. And furthermore, I, if, you, if, if I were to go so far as to be foolish enough to say that I'll represent the town in this little tiny matter, then it wouldn't be subject to the open meeting law either. Okay. But I don't know. The town wants me to do that. And I'm not sure it's appropriate, but those are okay. possibilities. All right. So Tom and Jim and I are going to work on a uh, a letter um, apologizing for this and kind of uh, seeing if there is interest in, in, in having some kind of uh, gallery exhibit at town hall. Uh, I'm saying next spring just to kind of put a time <laughs> on it because I don't know a time. Is that okay, Mikey, to say next spring? Yep. Um, this exhibit, I'll have to have a lot of help. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, you will. Thank you. you will. Definitely. Um, and something we might think about uh, if, with a little bit of this money is to get new um, uh, poles. Maybe uh, right now we have these uh, things that we have to tie up, but there's different systems and maybe a better system would work with the uh, um, paintings that are on the walls. Well, that would be a great use of funds for, for public right, art. Right. Can you give me a, a dollar amount, an idea of what that might right. help? I'll do some research on it. Cool. Okay, that'd be great. Thank you. If you bring that back to us, Mikey, I think that's something we can totally agree on. Okay. okay. First, I have to get the money, and I've I've asked Paul to put it in our... I, I just said, please put the money in our account as if I have the power to do so. So we'll see what they say about that. Yeah, and I'd also like to come up with something that's very visible to the public with, yes. with the money. Definitely. Yeah, I love that idea, too. All right. Well, let's let's keep our thinking caps on about those things, and we'll um, let's. I'm putting this on the October agenda so we can talk more about this. I think it's a really great idea, and we'll also talk about spending funds, as Mikey suggested. Okay. Um, great. Um, I'm not going to vote on anything here because really, um, we are not in agreement about about paying. Uh, my, about my first idea and I really like the idea that we've come up with together as a group so let's kind of flesh this out thank you so much everyone um 
and then I have the portal gallery, which we've already gone over with Dominique, and that will be that's evolving as well. I don't think I have to go over that again. So let's move on. Let's move on to the treasure report. What you got, Robert? Mm -hmm. Nothing to report, actually. Um, but as mentioned, I will follow up with Holly on these questions related to Dominique's contract. Um, but since we're not paying one anyone at the moment uh, or <laughs> receiving any money, there's there's very little to to talk about in the treasurer's report. Can you give me a what we have in the account right now so that I'm aware? Um. I cannot give you an exact number off the top of my head. We had um you know, I can't, you know, when I reported a couple of months ago, let me let me look and uh I don't want to put out a number that's that's not accurate. So okay. it was at least it, it was at least a couple of thousand dollars, I remember, and I think it was actually more than that, but I'll I'll get the exact number. I'm not gonna okay. put that in the minutes, Robert. I would um I would love to at some point discuss uh, upping the amount we give to our Boltwood artists. Fifteen hundred is something we've had for a while, and it's you know, it's not a lot of money. <laughs> so, something you might think about, you know, going forward. Okay. Um. Okay. Uh, let's talk about. Oh. Oh boy. <laughs> Public art publicity. That's something I'm not ready to talk about. Um. I've come up with some images for logos and they are so not ready. I'm not ready to show you, um, but I've been working on a couple of things. I'm going to wait for October um, on that. I was, I was kind of thinking though, there's something that doesn't require any work like that is to try to get some publicity whenever we switch uh, the town hall gallery. Yeah, we, we actually put that on Facebook every Month, I was but thinking don't about trying anymore. to call Steve Farrar of the Gazette and see if he would do a feature on it. And then, do you know, would, do you know him? Uh, enough. Okay. Uh, I think uh, we had some likes, dealings with maybe with writing him. a press release would be uh, a writing smart a press endeavor. release and then get, giving it to Steve and calling him up and seeing if he'll do something with it. Or, or anything to get it in the Gazette. Okay. Because Facebook only reaches a certain subset. Right. The Gazette would reach a much wider audience. So we need to have something that would be um, newsworthy for, okay. to go in the Gazette. And at least it would go in the, there's a little thing about what happenings around town. At a minimum, it would get there. Right. Well, the, the way it gets into there is there's a calendar. And there's a calendar for the Gazette and there's a calendar, I think there's a couple different calendars and you just go in and you put all the information in. It's different than yeah. the press release. Like the, the press Valley release. Release letter, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So those are two different things. Right. Yeah, so I have put things into the Valley Arts newsletter, but um, I, I have not sent press releases out to um, media yet in this area. I'm still new to town, so I'm not quite sure where to send things to. I can help with creating press releases. Um, unless I somebody can send you where I send. Um, I mean, it's not for art related, but where I send things for events. So okay. I can send you those links. Okay. And then Great. what you do is you just put in the information and they ask you to upload an image um, press release. So uh, uh, I can send that to you, right, Terry. Thanks. Should I send that to you, Terry and Mikey? Yeah, That's probably this, probably similar to the um, Valley News newsletter. Valley. Yeah. Valley? Wait a minute, Tom. Do you want to take on that part? Yeah. Sure. Thank you. Hey. I think I think that uh, that's a good way to start, and then after you get something in the paper a little bit, then it'll be easier to sell a bigger article on what the yeah. Well, the, the key. I think the key, you know, from my experience, if you if you want an article written, you want that you chunk of time. It journalist you lead with a press release yep yes, yes. yeah tom do you want to write that you is that something I'll you're into? i'll do that Yay. right right if you make right. it and easy. i'll make sure to get all the information on um bella halstead to you i okay. can walk it over wonderful. great wonderful. The easy, the you, want to, you want to see the you want to see these 
I mean, so, I would love to. Uh, oh, yeah, um, definitely, Tony. Definitely. As a as a copy editor, I, I live for those things. <laughs> 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 Give me a press release. I'll get my red pen out. It'd be great. <laughs> um, okay, okay. So the easier you make it for the reporter to publish an article, yeah. the yeah. more likely it will be yeah. that they will publish it. That's right. Robert? Uh, two things. Quickly, I just found the email with the balance in our account. It's four thousand one eighty four and twenty eight cents. Okay. Um, that was back in March, and I don't believe there's been any activity since then. We haven't paid anybody. Okay. Um, and then, pardon? Sorry, the pennies were what? Twenty eight. Thank you. Yep. Um, and then to the uh, the issue of publicity, I'm I'm wondering. It, it makes me wonder if someone were to ask because i believe there was an article in the gazette or there's there was some kind of media attention about the make it public there was uh, yep in the gazette, so, in the in the uh, reminder i believe yeah i saw it somewhere right and um i'm wondering if someone should ask um what the status of that is would it be a good idea for us to have some sort of prepared message to so respond as opposed Paul, to it was just kind of a no. uh, a uh, convergence of, of uh, mishaps. Um, um, I, I sent an email to the town manager and Angela Mills about this exact thing saying, uh, we, you know, we, we would, we will probably want to be getting ahead of this news and writing a press release and yeah. sending it out there. And could we have the help of Brianna Sunreed, who is our communications director and handles those kinds of things? Um, uh, or what, you know, what can I, how, how can they help us? And so I'm waiting to hear back about that. Cause I, I, I agree. I think, um, uh, optics for losing this grant um, don't look great. And no. I I brought that up many times with Paul before we lost the grant. Um, I said, you know, if this falls through, I feel like the optics are really bad on this. Um, through, I mean, it's really not our fault as a commission for, for what's happening here, but um, it does reflect poorly on us and on Amherst. And that's why Paul really did try to get them to rewrite the contract and it just, it just did not work. So uh, hopefully they're going to help us and we'll, we, need, we do need to write something to uh, get ahead of it. I agree with you. Okay. I have a suggestion for how to handle things like that. It, it, it seems to work better if you go in there saying what you did right than what, than if you go in, sometimes you have to apologize. I'm not saying it, that was wrong because it was kind of, yeah. But at this point, I suggest we only talk about positive things if we can figure out how to do that. Well, we should. I mean, if we're going to turn this into lemonade, like we talked about, and you know, on our next meeting, we'll talk about more specifics, uh, how we're going to invite this to be a town hall exhibit instead. Um, that can be how we lead. You know, we can lead with, you know, this is what we did right. This is what's going to become of this. Um, we've sent apologies, you know, um, mm -hmm. et cetera. I think that there's certainly a way we can write it so that we accentuate the positive, but still admit that there were mistakes, you know. I can think of a really big positive myself. We got five thousand dollars. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we got four thousand dollars in the account, and now we got nine thousand dollars in the account, and that doesn't sound like failure. It's it feels oogly to me. I'm a little, uh, you know. I'm I think little... there. I think that the unforeseen circumstances are, you know, reason that it didn't work go through was that we had, you know, one of the main people involved who was going to carry it forward a, a town personnel who took another position and that yeah. left an empty, so, what, you know, that, that left it, us with needing to replace that person and no one who had actually done the training involved in what yep. we're doing. Yep. And the town is still has that position open. Yes. So it was just unfortunate events that happened. Yeah. And Gabriel really did didn't try allow to us, that. Yeah. didn't allow us to move forward. You know, we tried to get someone to step in and, you know, still we didn't, we, we weren't able to do it. So I have a headline to suggest. Despite <laughs> having personnel disappear, the APAC Commission has obtained a $5,000 grant without even having to specify exactly what it was for. 
Uh, oh boy. No, I'm not. I'm not joking. I don't. I wouldn't. Well, this is our. We're talking followers. about. Are we talking about doing a press release, or we're talking about how we're going to respond? Just um, how we're going to respond well, in general. I'm just trying to say. You know, we're talking a lot about all the bad things that happened, and I'm looking here, and I'm saying, darn. This is fabulous. We had somebody else leave a position that we couldn't control. It wasn't our fault. And we still got a $5,000 grant. And that doesn't sound so terrible to me. Well, I think we, however we word that, um, I do think we want to be careful about how we're characterizing receipt of that 5,000. In other words, I don't yeah. think we want it getting back to NIFA that we're talking about having received $5,000 for doing nothing. Because there you go. No, they're I not going to want to have to explain why they allowed us to keep five thousand dollars when basically we bungled our end of the project. So I, yeah, I, I think I, it's I, all, all I was suggesting was that should anyone ask us, we have a prepared response. I, I'm not necessarily advocating that we put up a billboard um, no. and uh, you know advertise that we got five thousand dollars for this. Right. I wasn't suggesting putting that in the newspaper. I'm suggesting when we talk to the town manager and other people around town, that's all. I'm trying to get us off this, what a tragedy, and on to something more positive. That's all I'm suggesting. Yeah, I mean, I think we can definitely use the funds for a lot of positive things. And as we move down the agenda, you know, talking about the presence at the block party and strategic planning, I think we have some real projects to move the commission and the town's public art forward that we can definitely find um in fact you know nine thousand dollars uh you know I, I that's a good starting point at which to craft a budget once we come up with a plan of what we actually want to achieve yes so that's October. yeah dara i i don't even know where to start really um <laughs> I, if I'm sitting in here with all of you listening to us talk about it, and if I were somebody who had heard about it being advertised to submit proposals, and I bothered to submit a proposal, and then I was told that, well, we couldn't get it together enough to follow through and uh, take advantage of the grant and to complete the work that we had promised on our end. And, but we're going to give you $500 or whatever. What, I don't know if we decided 500 or a thousand because we didn't we vote We decided on it. against it altogether. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And Oops. so, yeah, because you don't want to sound like you're paying off people to be happy for our failure. Yeah, we, right. we actually talked about not going that route at all and instead inviting them to be part of a town hall exhibit in the spring. I think that's a much more positive outcome for this. Right. We've and, been, and just, just to be clear, I wouldn't talk to the people who made proposals in the same tone that I would talk to somebody else. Like right. I would be telling them what a great job we had because we got 5,000 because they didn't get anything. So I right. would be- All right. <laughs> with Tom, you have something to say? Yes. Yes. Uh, you know, we've had we've had very extensive discussion about this. We've let it all hang out, as they used to say. And this is all public record. Remember, the Zoom session is yeah. going to be up. Mm -hmm. Yep. Mm -hmm. OK, um, moving on to. Oh, um, but as by I the way, so since you said that. Just to be clear, I don't think anybody here is proposing that we say anything. Um, that is, it isn't completely accurate. I think what we're saying is that there's things you can emphasize that are good and things that you are, can emphasize which are bad. And it's a mistake to only emphasize the things that are bad when there was some good that came out of it. And so taking a positive attitude as much as best you can is, I think, at least what I was trying to advocate. And okay. with respect to the people that were hurt, then I would be very apologetic because they were hurt. And <laughs> All right. I think we're going to put a period on this conversation and move on. Um, uh, the block party is in uh, 10 days and um, we need to have a little plan of action here. And so a little conversation about that. Uh, I don't remember what time it starts. Um, I'm going to be there. 
I'm going to make name tags for you all. I don't know what they're going to look like yet, but I'll have name tags of some uh, kind. I might be using I, I will, on, on a piece of paper, but you'll have, you'll have name tags. Okay. <laughs> um, I will be out of town. Unfortunately. I know, I know you, yeah. and we will miss you, but yeah. Um, I have to spend two hours at the Amherst booth at the historical society booth. So I'll do Great. both. Great. Awesome. So, for the for the minutes, can I put the date of the block party in? Uh September twenty first. I believe it starts at four o'clock. Is my guess, but I'm not positive. I, have to I think it's from it. four to eight. Four to eight. Okay. Tommy yeah. has something to say there. Well, I was just going to say uh, I'm I'm available and and we'll be there. Great. Great. So uh, I'm considering buying a large roll of um of paper and bringing a lot of artist tool a lot lot of artist pens and markers and etc and rolling it out on a table and having people just come and and give us some art and um my main focus I think should be on um promoting the Boltwood Gallery which hopefully will be installed um so I will um hopefully have something about um about Dominique's uh, seeing beyond the self. And it might be fun to have a, a mirror motif for some kind of, um, you know, uh, how do you artistically represent yourself? And here's some paper, uh, very simple. I don't, you don't need a, you know, we don't need to reinvent the wheel here. There's a lot of students that'll be there. Um, kids and students love drawing. Um, I think providing them a place where they can express themselves and we can use the motif uh, using Dominique's um, exhibit as um, kind of a focal point if we want to. Uh, anybody have any ideas about that? Yeah, Robert. Um, I just saw a poster online that said the hours were from five to nine. So I just want to clarify. Um, no, I think an opportunity to make art is a great idea. I also think this is a great opportunity for us to gather information. You know, we've talked at, in previous meetings about trying to engage the public to get a sense of what the public actually wants to see in the way of public art in town. Yeah. And how they I think, think about the public cultural art. So council even if it's, kind of took off, so I already started. I'm sorry. Go ahead. I wanted to create a survey, but the Amherst Cultural Council has promoted a survey themselves about what they want the town to, um, what they, what grants they think the town will be interested in. And it's so closely aligned with what we do in focus that I'm concerned that if we also have a survey, um, it's gonna uh, kind of skew the results. So I wasn't sure about it. Well, first of all, um... No, I wasn't suggesting a survey. I'm curious to hear more about that survey. But no, what I was going to suggest was that we have something, you talked about paper. I mean, even if it's something as simple as, you know, pieces of paper and pencils or pens that people can write on and we have a small sign or something that just says, you know, please share your ideas or what would you like to see as public art in the town of Amherst? I mean, okay. it's... The role that. of paper, the role of paper idea should accommodate that too, mm -hmm. because I can walk up as as I can walk up to it and sketch something I think I might want to pre present, or mm -hmm. I could just uh, write my name and address and email and say, you know, please contact me. Um, that, that does so open think, some opportunities, yeah. Yeah, I found too in the past where. I've seen client colleges do this kind of thing. What What's really remarkable is when you get something on, on paper like that, it really sp um, spurs the next person who comes along to right. give you something. If, you, if it's just walk up and talk to us, you know, they don't know where to start. So I, I think that this, this is excellent, I think. That's an awesome Thanks. idea, both of you. Thank you, Robert. And thank you, so maybe just some of those big, either a, a big roll of paper that people can just add their ideas to or those big... Uh, Make it a big scroll. Know, big yeah, the big, yeah the big you scroll. know, those things that are used in meetings, uh, something that's easy. And then we would be able to um, refer to mm -hmm. um, to read and, and process them all. But I, yeah. I think it's... a an easier way than trying to create a survey. And as you say, there are problems with that than just, um, you know, hopefully we capture a, a good amount of, of information from that. Okay, I think, I think we that's could, a great idea. Yep. Huh, go ahead. I think, um, I think we can plan to just stay very close 
to our commission's main business, knowing that uh, there are other groups, um, you know, working in complementary fashions. Right. And go back and s scoop up what they, we can go around and spy on what they're doing <laughs> to ask, ask what results they got, they got uh, there. I do have a different suggestion, which okay. is, I wonder whether it, it would be uh, helpful to have some illustrations, maybe just eight and a half by 11 printed pictures Mm -hmm. of past public art um that the that the town has sponsored uh, again just just in in the interest of uh of um you know preemptively ask answering the question if somebody walks up and says gee what is public art what right. are you guys doing we can say well here remember you might remember those emily dickinson um snippets that were on those little white constructions several years ago right or, or whatever you know, whatever else and, you know of course the the electronics boxes um pictures like that again just if they were put in laminated holders and then taped to the front of the table you know people could see those right away oh that's what it is they this group was behind that you know until i joined this this commission i had no idea where those paintings on the electronics, you know, the traffic signal boxes came from. Transformer boxes, yeah. Good yeah. Point. But don't forget they have the copyrights and you got to make sure if you're going to hand something out or use it, that we have the right to do that. Well, I think these are, some of them are on the website. So they've yep. been kind of well, public. Already. But I don't think copyright would be a problem if you're not using it to make money or to, I don't think that's an issue. For just, uh, mm, no, I, the, I beg the, owners, uh, the owner of the copyright would have the latitude to decide whether they were approving or not. But if things are essentially in the public domain uh, for one reason or another, then that's that's another matter. But I think the point that we should be a little careful about how we uh, use images of people's art is is mm -hmm. well. Yeah, I mean, there is a thing called fair use, which means that even if it's copyrighted, if it falls within the fair use exception, that you can use it. But I really don't want to, you know, that's a very tricky decision. Yeah, we don't want to work, walk the legal tightrope on, no, on this. But I, I think, I think if the, if the town has published images uh, of these before, I think we're probably, probably okay. Again, I'm uh, not a player, but I always end up playing one at work. Okay, so like if I go 85 miles an hour in a 55 mile zone on Monday, does that mean that on Tuesday I can go 85 miles an hour in a 55 zone because I've done it before? Uh, yes. <laughs> no, actually, <laughs> the town, if the town has decided that it had, it, it had, you know, it was clear to, publish an, an, an image of artworks that it sponsored if they've already decided that i think we as a town organ can probably do it again but uh, uh, i'm, I'm going to uh, uh, stop you there jim yeah. i think dara wants to say something yeah, go ahead sorry um, but this is kind of important two things and not quite related um one is maybe uh something should go in every future contract that says the commission has a right to use images of work that they've sponsored in the public right. context. Well, I'm not right. saying it's not already there, by the way, just to be clear. Well, I'm that's what I'm, I don't know if it is or not. And I'm just saying it should be if it's not. Yeah, I agree. No, I think that's good. And then the other but If thing, it's a public art, I'm oh, sorry, go ahead. The other thing is, um, I'm wondering if anybody on the commission has any contacts with or anything to do with anybody on the cultural council well uh yeah. i have talked to matt holloway and uh he's a really really great guy yeah uh, Matty. i can't say i'm pals but uh I've, I've had a few conversations with him and i think he's a great guy why did you well yeah. because i was in a meeting a week or two ago listening to him talk mm -hmm. and he was talking about a sculpture that they had bought to basically bought 
to put up in, in front of the library. Mm -hmm. And so I, I, it feels like to me, there ought to be a back and forth of between the cultural council and the public art commission oh oh believe me i have brought this up with our town manager i have said we need to join forces i gave him a, a an outline of what we should be doing <laughs> you, yeah, you got a you got an yeah. earful about this exact topic because i think we're all so that would be great for us to see yeah i will share that with you um he thought he said thank you very much and i I, I don't know what he's going to do with it. Maybe nothing, but I, I had, I said, I said what I wanted to say, which is because that we all have to be working together. Well, see, because their money comes to them every year from yes. Mass Cultural Council. Yep. So they always have a significant budget to spread yep. around in all of, any way that their council. And chooses. we don't even have a line item. So I know. Yeah. Well, they don't really have a line item either. They get their money. Well, no, they don't. The but they, they get NCC funds. Yeah. Yeah, good point. Like, it's interesting to watch the, like, they decide a lot more things than this commission does. Which is so exciting. I I, I love what they're doing for the town. Yeah. I yeah. would love to join forces. And I've talked to Matt about that. And I hope that we can make something happen. Like some collaborations. Yeah. Uh, Robert, did you have something you wanted to say? Um, probably. Uh, <laughs> oh, I remember now. Um, so for the block party, I'm wondering if uh, Dominique can provide perhaps any drawings or something that we could have at the table that would spark interest for the Boltwood Gallery. Yep. And I also I saw in the timeline of the contract that you know the unveiling was perhaps going to take place at the block party. I'm just wondering if that's realistic, you know, I, I, that people would be diverted from Pleasant Street to go over to the parking lot. I, I just, I wonder about that. Right. And um, I'm, I'm thinking that, and marketing is not my, my skill or, or, or talent, but um, if, if, if it would be, better to make it its own event um plus i'm just not sure i mean although she, it sounds like she's um far along in the in the creative process but i you know i just don't know if that would be the right night to try to um bring people over to the bolton gallery i think it would be a great time for us to promote it and um, yeah and which I, is why i was, I was yeah. thinking if, if if she could provide some samples that we'd have at the table and then right you know, explain about the portal gallery, um, because I'm guessing a lot of people wouldn't be familiar with it. Yeah, I'm going to invite her to the table for um, to, oh, to be present and to talk cool. about her new project. I talked to her about this already. Um, I can probably. also ask her to bring some some you know, pictures of the art. That'd be great. So I think maybe a better idea. We don't have the people power to actually have two things, you know, at block party. Uh, so I agree. It, this would just basically be a promotion. And I think we do need to set up an, an unveiling night. I I uh, look, f I, I need to figure out, we all need to figure out when we can schedule that. I, I love that idea. I'm, I don't have anything on my, set on my calendar for when that date could be. I could talk to her about it and see what she thinks. If she wants to have an October unveiling, we can make that happen. A um, few weeks notice, we should be able to do it. So um, I'll talk to her about it and I'll bring that up with her and I'll let you know at the next meeting. Also, do you know where, our table will be at the block party? I don't, no. Uh, I mean, it's one strip, uh, so yeah. on there somewhere. Uh, I think we're getting a, uh, I don't even know what the word, what is the word, a booth? A booth? Think we're getting a booth? Eh, anyway, I think we're getting a booth. Um, I'm bringing my extra table just in case. And uh, I'm going to talk to um, Matt about it and Gabrielle and see who has the information about this because this is something the BID does as well. Mikey? Liz Larson is in charge of it, I think. She's on the BID. Do you know Liz? Very well. Friend? Would yep. you She's ask a, her? I'll be at a meeting with her tomorrow night. Hey, while you're there in a meeting with her, would you just kind of say, hey, what's public art going to get? Because <laughs> right. We'd love well, to I, I know that last year with the um, historical society, because I'm on both, um, we they gave us a table and two chairs, and then we okay. had to bring the rest. Okay. 
So um, we were in front of the um, where the new burger place is now. So and Amherst Neighbors was by us. So I think pretty much the arts were in that area. Okay, great. Um, by CVS. Well, if you'll ask so, her, well, I'll find out. Great. And I'll tell Any you. details you can sh share with us, it'd be great. And I'll just I'll right. bring my table just in case. And right. I'll, I'll have lots of uh, pens and, and I've got artists in my house. So I've got all but we have no brochure, which is uh, the, we the have, other two. I have some old brochures, but they're pretty old. Um, I'll bring them because it might be interesting. Lori, sorry. Yeah, I wanted to go back to that. And the brochure, I think, um, ties in. I, I like Tom, your 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 idea about having images of, of what public art we have um facilitated in the town in the past, although I still am unclear about exactly what they are other than poetic dialogue and <laughs> maybe the um they're on the website actually. They've got I know, but they're not all they're all mixed in. Some are ours, some are some are things we've been involved in some are things that UMass has done through the University Museum there it's all a big jumble so yeah. I think we're a little premature in terms of being able to get this together for the block party but I think it's very important for us to, to think about putting this on our agenda for what we want to do going forward and cleaning up what's on the town website and also creating a brochure yep. and I do think I just wanted to go back to this this uh rights to use images if we take an image of public art that image is there's no copyright problem as far as i know yes, i'm taking is. an image of a public art piece and that's including a copy. it i'm sorry but that's a copy that absolutely is it is a it's not a copy of the art it's an image of the art it's it you you can take a photograph of of a public art piece and oh, put it on your Facebook without any copyright. You can you, put it at a stand. You know, I, there's not. If you God. use it in your own artwork, that's a problem. That, well, let Mikey um, talk in then. Well, well you but can't anyway, do that's sell my it. Opinion. That's my professional art yeah. opinion, yeah. having yeah. worked with artists. Okay. The, but, the, law, the law says that you cannot make a copy of a copyrighted work unless we're not making a copy of the sculpture we're just taking a photograph of it in a public space i'm, I'm not going to discuss it anymore but anyway that's so, all so, so <laughs> from the rights and reproduction side of it um which is what i've done with historical societies um you can't sell it you can't right. put it in a photograph exactly. and sell it but exactly it's, right so that's the big dichotomy so if we had it, exactly. had it next to like a big you know pot and we said hey please you know donate money to public art we would be that would get us in big trouble right that we can't do that anyway there you can't yeah. sell anything yeah the thing is right. you've got to um it's probably covered in our contracts so what i'm only really trying to say is we have to think about it it's a serious thing and copyright violations if you make one are very big deals so all I'm saying is let's check our work and not make assumptions about what we can do and what we can't because what I've worked with cop I'm not a copyright lawyer but I have done work in the area and the really the test is more is it fair use and and there's a lot of factors that go into fair use and saying well you you can copy it if you don't sell it may or may not be true and so okay the, before we offer these uh images we will we will look this over in the contracts and see what's uh yeah, legal just, i also still do have old brochures from years past that i'm going to take a look at and uh, the information might be old but the pictures might be might be on there still i don't know so i'll i'll take yeah. a look what they have so just in so i'm not saying we can't do it i'm just saying we have to watch our step Lori, I like the idea also of getting new brochures made. I think that's really important to work, you know, to work on that kind of thing for the future. Um, we uh, so so um, I think I am going to send a follow up email about this meeting so that we are all on the same page about what's happening on the twenty first, so that we're all we're all prepared. Um, 
And any other tidbits that we need to kind of sum up here? I know I'm I'm running uh, eight o'clock after eight o'clock. I'm noting the time. Also noting there's a number of things still on our agenda. Uh, so I want to check in and see what our time is like. Everyone, I honor and am grateful for your time. Can we go further, or does somebody need to bow out? Or I'm good. Try to go forward as fast as we can. Is that okay? Yeah, I'd love to finish okay. at eight thirty though. Okay. That sounds great. Let's do that. Okay. Um, so let's move along then to, um, okay. I'm not going to talk about the APAC logo right now. Um, I am going to say that the town website needs work and an audit. And if you have changes or you see corrections that need to be done, send me an email. Uh, I'm going to be talking to Brianna about updates to the website. They're very excited that we're even interested in updating the website because no other commission is really into it. And I really am. So, so that's very exciting. So we'll get that whipped into shape, made it look a lot better. Tom? Um, am I mistaken or did I see in the paper, in the newspaper in the last few days that Brianna is leaving? Oh, son, Brianna Sunridge leaving? leaving? Another person leaving? That's I can apply for her job. Oh, Just, kidding. <laughs> Just kidding. Just kidding. Well, that is very sad. She's wonderful. So I, I will, I will uh, look into that. I will. She's been really cool. Uh, yeah. Amherst is losing people. They're moving on to other jobs. Oh, hate it. Um, anyway, yeah, town website changes, uh, audit. If you have stuff, send it to me. Um, I'd like to get those sent along. Um, doo -doo -doo -doo, fast, fast, fast. Strategic planning discussion. I know, Robert, we really want to talk about this. Uh, we still may need to table it because I don't think we have enough of an idea, but can you give us kind of a summary of what we can look forward to in talks in the future about strategic planning. I could say a lot, but I need someone else to talk. And I think you've got really great ideas. Well, thank you. I, you know, I, I think we've, we've touched on a lot of topics tonight that relate to that. I mean, one being in town, the presence of the cultural council, the, the BID, I mean, they're, they're organizations that should be working very closely together that at the moment, from my perspective, uh, don't have particularly great communication with each other. Right. Um, and I think if, um, you know, th this commission, I, I think uh, m many of us are, are still feels relatively new. It's just been a year. But um, personally, I, th I, I find it challenging because I, I just don't feel like we have a clear direction on, on what we're trying to accomplish, really. And right. um, so I think if if we were to take some time and um, do some planning and, and figure out um, strategy, I mean, you know, one of those points being uh, collaboration with the other arts related organizations in town yep. um, and really how to engage the public and, you know, the five colleges. I mean, there, there's no shortage of uh, artists in this area. Right. And, um, you know, lots of people who do a lot of thinking about art and society and community. And, you know, I just think we have a great deal of untapped potential, but it feels like, you know, in my time on the commission, we've been very reactive for obvious reasons. You know, we're, right. we're not really being particularly proactive. And I, I think, um, the planning process would allow us to to do that and you know use our funds wisely and well and build momentum for actually raising more funds and whether that's in conjunction with the cultural council or you know being able to go back to nifa and say you know we've really got our act together here's our strategic plan for what we see as public art over the next one to three years um you know i i just think uh we name we may not be as effective as we could be if we don't develop a plan definitely so um hopefully we can we can carve out some time and i you know it's going to be more than one meeting it's going to be a process and ideally i think it would engage other people not on the commission if we really want to get um the input of a lot of different voices so I'm hoping that's something that we can uh, make a priority as we go along. Absolutely. Uh, Jim, did you want to say something to that? No, I uh, did have a mistake. Sorry. Oh, <laughs> you raised your hand. 
Yes. Robert, um, yeah, you just put everything in, into perspective here. Uh, those three issues were really big with me, creating partnerships and collaborations, engaging the public and networking with the artist community are really big things on my list for strategic planning going forward. Um, I think I'd like to spend a lot more time on this in October. Um, uh, if possible, I'd love to have a separate meeting just on strategic planning. I think it'll be really great for us all to talk about this, um, to come up with a different mission statement. We have a very vague mission statement. I'd really love to, to kind of make it more concrete and then come up with doable goals, things that we can actually accomplish. Not too big, um, starting off small and then growing on successes. That's what I would like to see us doing in the future. So um, how about October, we put um, we put a big pin in strategic planning and make it a big item on the table to talk about. Is that okay? Yes, Mikey? Um, we also have the um, town hall exhibit yes. for the spring on there too. So yes, just definitely. Both of them. Okay. Okay, those are two big things we're gonna be talking about. Barry, are you thinking about um, one meeting where these are prioritized or are you thinking about a, a separate meeting it might be a it might not be a bad idea to have a separate meeting about strategic planning because um i think it's a little bit more yeah, I, would vote, I would vote for that the you know the ordinary business has a way of eating up the clock it does yeah so what if we um how about if i send out a google doodle is that the word google doodle how about i send out a doodle to get maybe a um a mid-october uh meeting just on strategic planning um, see who can attend that, if we can get enough people to get together and talk about it. Um, mm -hmm. And then we can go into our November meeting and have a place where we can actually vote on something, maybe, you know, bring something to the table to talk about. Does that sound doable? I like it. Yeah, Robert. You said a question about, um, I imagine we cannot really have a retreat. I mean, whenever we assemble as a group, we're subject to open meeting laws, correct? Yes. Yes. Okay. Uh, so I did want to, I, I talked to the town manager about this exact thing, and uh, he said he's going to be suggesting a uh, a plan in the future where you are, um, you you uh, plan on having a, a hybrid. So so you'll have like, you know, uh, six, six of your meetings per year could be in person, six would be online, um, but you have to have a space where enough, where, where the public can attend if they want. And so I said, well, that sounds like town hall. I said, we, you know, we, we have to have evening meetings because we all work. And he said, and I said, that's a problem. And he said, it's not a problem The custodians work, you know, for the town, we can work that out. So um, I, something I thought I'd bring up is, is the possibility of open meeting laws being um, relaxed a little. And this is, this came from, from our actual town manager so that maybe we can have as long as we keep having these remote meetings, which are very inclusive and allow a lot of uh, participation, or at least the possibility and potential of that, um, we can also have in-person meetings uh, happen in the future that we also obviously invite the public to attend as well. So that's something that I think is gonna be uh, coming up in the future. I'm, I hope so, I'm embracing it. I would love it, get together in one place and have some coffee together and chat in real in real space. All right, so I'm going to be sending you a doodle about mid-October to talk about just a strategic planning, and we'll see what we can get on the books, okay? And then uh, uh, our the October meeting will probably be that will be the first Monday. In uh, we we had that poll. You all said, except for Dara, and I'm so sorry, Dara, but Mondays seem to work for everybody. I know that wasn't your favorite day. Is it okay to to continue on making Monday meetings work? I think Daryl was the only one who was like, ah, Mondays aren't my favorite. <laughs> I agree. Um, October would be uh, October 2nd. So um, I'll be sending you a doodle to make sure October 2nd works for everybody. And then we'll have hopefully a mid-October meeting for strategic planning. Anyway, how's that sound? Sounds good. I feel like I'm talking a lot. I'm sorry. Blech. Uh, yeah. What we didn't get to is grant cycle, which is only to say the grant cycle has begun. September 1st was the date that MCC started out its grant cycle, and our local community uh, cultural council has opened up their books. But we can't 
ask for money without a plan. Um, so we need to talk about some plans. And uh, I want to try to have an ask before the close of the grant cycle, if possible. Um, if we can come up with some something we would like to see. I do want to do electrifying Amherst again, which is the transformer box project. It's something that Paul said that he would like to see us do as well. So I think we could get some support on it. But we will talk about all that in October. Um, for now, um, is there any other business that we did not anticipate prior to 48 hours before this meeting? Anybody have anything they wanted to bring up for new business? I have exhausted you all. You're all exhausted. You're falling asleep. <laughs> okay, well, it's been almost two hours. You are very patient and wonderful. Um, I will uh, be sending you emails, keep an eye out for them. And then I will see some of you on September 21st in person in downtown. I look forward to seeing you. And Lori, have wonderful holidays. We'll miss you. Thank you. Um, thank you so much. I am going to ask somebody to make a motion to adjourn, please. Unless there's anything else we need to discuss or anything anybody wants to announce. Nope. I okay, move, so I move I, that we adjourn the meeting. The second. Second. Great. A show of hands or an aye. Aye. Oh, wonderful. Motion passes. Thank you so much for your time. Uh, so Thank much you. of your time tonight. I really appreciate it, and I'll be talking to you on the email soon. Thank All right. Thanks. Thank you. Have a good night. Bye bye. Thank <laughs> you.